Hello everyone, once again, welcome back. In our last lesson, we finalized our contract and in this lesson, we are going to write tests for our contract. As you know, we cannot change the code in the blockchain once we deploy it. So even though testing is a very important part of software development in general, for Web3 development is even more important because we need to be sure that our contract is working properly so that we don't need to create another contract and migrate it. Since we are working with actual tokens, which can convert it to actual money, we want to make sure that we are not making any mistakes while working with a subject that much delicate. And also we want to make sure that we are minimizing the gas fee. So in general, testing is very important, but for Web3, it's even more important. Start writing our tests, First, we need to make a little modification in our contract. As you can see, we have our init function, but what we are also going to create is, we are going to say test only here, so that this code is just the part of the test. We are telling this to the compiler. And then underneath it, we are going to create another function. And in this function, we are going to say function init for testing. So we are creating a special init function for testing because normally, we testing framework cannot directly work with our init function, cannot call it. So uh, we are going to create a function which calls our init function. For this, we are going to have transaction context, going to say TX context here, and inside we are going to call init with our transaction context. All right, so that's the only modification that we are going to do in our contract. For the testing, we can also test our contract in the same module that we are creating it, but we can also create a different file and let's call this messenger underscore test.move. And we can also create our testing in a different module. So for this one, first, let's say this is test only. Next, we are going to say module, first our package name example, then messenger underscore test. So this will be our module. And we are going to use SUI testing framework, which is going to give us a lot of functions that we can work with. Again, I know it's not the part that most developer like, but I think after we got it, after we create our tests, you are going to enjoy testing your contracts. First, we are going to say use SUI test scenario. So we are going to use test scenario from C and we're gonna see what it does in a while. And then we are going to say use example messenger. So we are importing the stuff that we want to use from our messenger. And these are first we are going to start with self. Once we need to import more than one thing, then we get into this convention. First we are going to say self, then messenger, and finally admin. Let's save this to make sure everything works properly. We are okay with the warnings. We don't want any errors. So next thing we are going to do is we are going to create our test function. For this, we are going to say test this time instead of test only. And inside this, I'm going to create my function. So let's say test create. With the test create, we are going to test the creation of our object. So first, what we're going to need is mock addresses. Normally, we would call this transaction with an address and with a value which has the, some SUI in it. Since we are not working with tokens, we don't need to mark the coins, but we are going to need to mark our addresses. For the first one, I'm going to say let owner equals at 0xa. So this is the convention that we are going to use. After at, we are going to say 0xam. The next one is, let's say this is user1. And this will be 0xb, and I'm going to have a user2. This is going to be 0xc. So it's basically ABC. Next, we are going to start our test scenario. For this, I'm going to say, say let, let's say, scenario value equals a scenario, and we are going to say begin with the owner. So owner is the one who is going to initialize our contract. Next, we are going to have a scenario. And with the scenario, we are going to hold a mutable reference to our scenario value. 
Now I got my users, uh, I got my scenario. Now I can start testing my code. For that, I'm going to say test scenario next transaction is going to be from the scenario and the owner. So let's see what we did here. After creating our MAC addresses, we created a scenario and we are going to work with the scenario. It's going to have the necessary functions that we are going to use in our smart contract. And then we set test scenario next transaction. And this means that there will be a transaction in this scenario from this address. So we put scenario and the owner. And inside this, I have my curly brackets. And as you can see, I have a semicolon at the end. Now inside this, I'm going to initialize my contract. For that, I'm going to say messenger init for testing. And inside this, I'm going to say test scenario CTX and scenario. And this is going to give our transaction context. From the test scenario, we are going to call this a CTX function. And inside this, we are going to give our scenario. And the structure here, is our transaction context. Here we initialize our contract and now we are going to make another transaction. For that, again, I'm going to say the scenario and now next transaction is going to be from scenario and the owner will do the transaction. Again, I got my block. So the first thing I want to do is to get the object from the owner. I know it's a little bit plot twist here, but let me tell you. What happens is that since the owner has the object, we cannot work with objects since we are not the owner. So for the test, we can get the object from the owner. We can have the object inside the function. Then we check the object or we do whatever we want to do with the object. And then we give it back to the owner. We are not directly going to check if the owner has this and that, but we are going to get the object from the owner and we are going to return the object to the owner. I'm going to say let admin equals a scenario and from the test scenario i'm going to say take from sender so as the name suggests we are going to take it from the sender and what we are going to take is admin so here i put what i'm going to take and then scenario i know it looks a lot to take in in the first look but the more we work on it, it's going to be just much more simpler since we do the same things over and over again. But for the first time, I know that it looks a little bit crowded. There are a lot of information to take in. Don't worry, I had the same problem. Actually, learning the test part was actually even longer for me. But I think it's going to be much easier for you this time since there's someone to tell you <laughs> what to do. But uh, again... Don't worry, and with time, it's going to be much easier. Now that I took the object, I can test my function. To test my function, I'm going to call messenger, and from the messenger, I'm going to call the create messenger function. And if you remember, as the first parameter, if we check our contract, we have the admin object. So for that reason, we are going to pass the admin here. And if we look at the next part, what we have is a name and message. And these are actually vector of U8s. Let me show you how we can pass this vector of U8s. So it's basically like a string. So let's say the name is Simon. But the difference is that we are going to put B here so that it's going to be treated as bytes. Then we have the message. The message is three rocks. I know it's used a lot in the, this program examples, but honestly, I really love working with Swift. So we got the admin, we got the name, and we got the message. Let's check what we have. We have to, from, and the transaction context. It's going to be to, let's say, user to, from, user one. And for the transaction context, we are going to say a scenario, CTX, and then inside this, we are going to say, scenario as you can see we have a problem there and the problem says invalid call to messenger init for testing so if you check the init for testing name here and the name here are the same so the, we also have the transaction context as a parameter so what's wrong here what's wrong here is that if i don't put the word public then it's actually a private function 
So I'm going to say public here since it's test only, we won't have any problems. And if I go back there, as you can see, I got rid of my error. So it's important that we make our testing initialization function public so that we can call it in our actual testing module. I created my object. And if you remember how it works, it should be on user two now. So we are sending, we are creating the object and we are sending to user two. Let's check our function really quickly. And as you can see, we are transferring to two location, not the from location, the first one. In our test, the first one is user2, so it's going to the user2. Since it's going to the user2, first thing I want to check is it's not on the user1. To do that, I'm going to say assert, and it's a macro, so I'm going to put an exclamation mark there. But with this assert, we can check if this value is equal to that value, and if not, we are going to return an error. Inside this assert function, first thing I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to say test scenario, and the function is as most recent or sender, the type will be a messenger. And we are going to say scenario here and the zero. And you know that I'm going to tell what's happening here. So what's happening here is that first, we are checking something if this is true. We can say A equals B comma zero because we are checking if a equals to the b but here we are checking if the thing that we send here actually returns true if the sender has the most recent object so with this function has most recent for sender we are checking if the sender of this transaction has the most recent object and which type of object we are giving it here the messenger it's like the time we gave the admin if you remember once we said take from sender, we need to say what we are taking. So we said admin. And here we are checking has most recent for sender. We are checking if the sender has the object, but which object, again, the messenger. And we are passing scenario as the parameter. Then we are checking if this is true. If not, then it's going to return this zero, which is our error code. In general, what you want to do is you can create error codes like this one. Let's create one. I'm going to say, let's say object not sent. And I can say this equals to zero. And then instead of zero, I can put object not sent here. So this is a basic convention that I use a lot in tests. I just want you to know it, but for the time being, we are just going to leave it as zero. But what's going to happen is I think that it's going to return false because what we are expecting is that the owner won't have the object. The object should belong to the user too. So for that reason, I'm going to say not here. I'm going to say not here so that if this is false, with the not, it's going to convert it to true. Okay, so this is my first test. Before moving on, we just got this admin object from the sender and we need to give it back. And here I'm going to say a scenario return to sender and scenario admin. We are returning this object to the sender. We are using scenario as our parameter. And what we are returning, we are returning the admin. Let's take a quick look again. I got the admin object and I passed as a parameter. I created my object. And then I checked if the owner has the object. And then I returned to this admin object to the owner since I'm done with it. Now I'm going to create another test scenario. Let's say next transaction. Sorry, I'm going to create another transaction, another test scenario. And this is going to be scenario and user2. Since user2 needs to have the object, we are going to check if the user2 actually have the object. For that one, let's create our block. And inside our block, we are going to check with this assert. We are going to do the same thing. Test scenario is most recent for sender. Messenger, scenario, and zero. So we did the same thing, but we didn't convert this because I think this is going to evaluate to true and I want this to be true. But if I didn't put this, which turns true to false and false to true, then this false part would cause an error. 
because I think this is going to, you know, evaluate the false. It needs to evaluate the false. I'm converting it to true with this one here. So if this is actually true, if my owner actually has the object, this is going to be true, then I convert it to false then I'm going to have an error and as I should because the owner should not have the object. The user 2 should have the object since it was going to user 2 from the user 1. Now we have our assert, so we are checking the same thing but for the user 2 without having a conversion there. The final thing to do, and we should do this for all testing, I'm going to say test scenario and from the test scenario I'm going to say end and I will test the scenario value. Now let's save it. And it looks clean. So take a quick look again. We created our MAC addresses. We created a scenario here with these two lines. And we said that we are going to send a transaction to this scenario from this address. And in this transaction, we initialize our contract using init for testing, which we created specifically for the testing. Then we said, I'm going to create another transaction, and this transaction is going to be in the scenario from this address. First, we got this object, which our owner got in here with initialization, and we passed that object, and we called our create messenger function. And in this function, what we're expecting to happen is that our user two will have the object. We checked if the owner have the object, and then we return the admin object to the owner. Then we create another transaction where we test if the user two has the object and we ended our testing at the end with test scenario end. Now we can test our contract. And to test our contract, it's going to be really simple. What I'm going to say is SUI move test. So let's see if everything works. Yep, we have total of one test, one passed and none failed. But Instead of user two, if I say user one, I'm expecting to have an error. Uh, otherwise it means that it's just uh, saying, oh, okay, for anything, right? So let's say the same thing again. And as you can see now, I have one test, but it failed. And we can understand it from this like big red fail. Where the error comes from, and as we can see, error comes from this line, this assert. So it means that we failed. I'm going to change it back to the user two. Make a quick test again. Now everything is working just fine. So I know that we need more information about testing because we, what if we need to test different conditions? We, we are going to use different uh, functions and so on. SUI documentation is really good to learn testing. And also I would recommend SUI repository too on GitHub. Other than these, we are also going to have a test for our smart contract where we are going to get more in depth. I believe that the more we do it, the more we need it, we are going to find the solutions since they are out there. So thank you very much for listening to me on this testing video and I will see you on the next one.